Welcome to UGC e Patshala, PG Learning and Food Science. I am Shajni Judith, Assistant Professor from the Department of Home Science, Women's Christian College. Today, I am going to be teaching you about the structure, composition and nutritive value of meat. Many of us who are non-vegetarians eat meat on a, re on a regular basis. But have you ever wondered about, the, about its structure, its composition and nutritive value? Meat dishes are often a delicacy at home, but do we know uh, anything about its structure and composition? So today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the origin, structure and composition of different types of meat and I will also uh, enable you to understand the nutritive value of meat. Meat is an important food commodity which provides nutrients essential for health. Humans have hunted and killed animals for meat since prehistoric times. The advent of civilization allowed the domestication of animals such as chickens, sheep, pigs and cattle. This eventually led to their use in meat production on an industrial scale with the aid of slaughterhouses. So how do we define meat? Meat is animal flesh that is eaten as food. The term meat includes the edible portion of mammals like cattle, swine and sheep. Sometimes rabbits are also used as sources of meat. Meat, when I say meat, it also includes the glands and organs of these animals. Meat products include many of the byproducts that are obtained from animal slaughterhouses such as animal gut which are used in sausage casings, the fat in the manufacture of lard, gelatin and others. This picture will give you an idea of the different types of meat that is the red meat that is eaten in India. The beef from the cattle, the pork from the pigs and the lamb from the sheep. Okay, now I am going to talk about the different classes of meat. Veal and beef, they are obtained from the cattle. Veal is the meat that is got from cattle slaughtered between 3 to 4 weeks after birth. So it is the meat of the young calf. The beef is the flesh or the meat of the cattle which is over 1 year old. Now from the sheep we get the mutton, the yearling mutton and the mature mutton. All these are slaughtered at different stages um, of age. Mutton is the flesh of young ovine animals of both sexes whose age is under 12 months and the earling mutton is the flesh of the young sheep which is usually about 12 to 20 months old and they are termed as the earling mutton. Now the mature mutton is the flesh of both the male and the female ovine species that are 20 months in age at the time of slaughter. So the mutton is actually obtained from the young sheep. The mature mutton is obtained from the sheep that is uh, quite older in age. Pork is the meat of swine and good quality pork is obtained from animals between the age of 3 to 12 months. If the a swine uh, is you know very old in age then there is a lot of fat uh, uh, that gets deposited in the flesh of the animal and it makes it undesirable for uh, cooking and for uh, consumption. So it is best to eat the pork between the age of 3 to 12 months. Organ meats are also come under the class of meat. Um, when I say organ meat, it includes the liver, the kidney, the heart, the thymus, the pancreas and the brain. Um, and the sausages are products that are obtained from meat. It is made of ground or minced meat and which are enclosed in casings. Let us now look into the structure of meat. The animal flesh consists of muscle tissue or fibers connective tissue and fatty tissue which in other words is called as the adipose tissue. So the animal flesh is composed of three major things, the muscle tissue or the muscle fibers, the connective tissue and the fatty tissue. The lean, um, now let's look at the muscle tissue of the animals. The muscle of the animals also com uh, contain water, proteins, minerals and vitamins. It also contains pigments, a red pigment called as the myoglobin. Let's now look, in, um, look at the muscle tissue in great detail. 
when i say muscle tissue it is the bund it is the bundles of fibers or muscle cells which are held together by the connective tissue and they make up the lean portion of meat the thickness of the muscle fibers the size of the fiber bundles and the amount of connective tissue binding them together determine the grain of the wheat i will repeat once again the grain of the meat which is a very good indicator of the quality of meat is determined by the thickness of the muscle fibers the size of the fiber bundle and the amount of connective tissue binding them together when the muscle fibers and the muscle bundles are small the meat is fine and velvety and is considered to be a top quality meat when we look at the cross section of an individual muscle fiber it appears as a highly specialized multi nucleated elongated cell varying in size with function and amount of use the muscle cell when observed under the microscope um, um, shows an outer covering of membrane and an inner filling of small rod like structures called the fibr fibrillae the fibrillae are dense protoplasm enmeshed in a semi fluid muscle material Individual muscle fibers are made up of cells which contain the proteins actin and myosin. The actin and myosin form the contractile proteins and in live animals the actin and myosin work together to make the muscle contract and relax. So this is the picture or uh, this is the diagram of the structure of meat. You can see um, the tendons here which connect the muscle to the bones. and you can also see the cross section of the muscle bundles which are made up of individual muscle fibers and they are surrounded by the connective tissue okay now there are two types of muscle fibers inside the muscle bundle the fine muscle fibers and the thick muscle fibers so the fine muscle fibers are from the muscles of the young animals or from if they are from the older animals then they are from the muscles which do least work so they contain little collagen and are tender even when cooking time is very short example like when meat um, the muscles that contain the fine muscle fibers can be cooked in a relatively shorter period of time uh, like the grilling now muscle fibers the fine muscle fibers are very small and can be seen only under a microscope and the length of the muscle fiber also varies in the case of the thick muscle fibers these come from older animals and also from animals um, and and uh, sorry and also from muscles which do the maximum work such as the neck and the shin so the muscles that are found around the neck and the shin um, they are the thick muscle fibers when compared to the fine muscle fibers the thick muscle fibers have more connective tissue in them to prevent muscle damage so this type of meat is tougher and needs long slow cooking with moisture to make it tender so only moist heat methods of cooking can be adopted for the thick muscle fibers and um, the method of cooking that is most suitable for the thick muscle fibers is the casserole so this pic uh, picture again gives you uh, the cross section of the meat so you can see the uh, kind of the uh, the individual muscle fibers as i already told you about the elongated spindle shaped fibers and uh, the fibrillae in them um, the individual muscle fibers make up the muscle bundles which are surrounded by the connective tissue now moving on to this uh, the next component of the meat the connective tissue see although the muscle tissue gives the meat its characteristic appearance and to some extent its flavor and texture it is the connective tissue of meat that determines the tenderness of meat now when we come to cooking meat tenderness is a desirable quality and even when meat is bought at the market um, i mean it's a very good um, um, tenderness is a is a one of the important criteria that helps us in buying meat Con uh, connective tissue in meat forms the walls of the muscle fibers so the individual muscle fibers which are held together as muscle bundles are surrounded by the connective tissue now there are three types of connective tissues um, in the structure of the meat one is the sinew which is found in the tendon 
and in the, uh, the tendon is something that connects the muscle to the bones and then it is found in the cartilage. Cartilage are the joints between the bones and the connective tissue also um, occurs as sheets or walls around organs and compartments in the body. So for example, the diaphragm and the skin comes under this part of the connective tissue. Now there are, there are two types of uh, 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 connective tissue, connective tissue that is loose and connective tissue that is compact. Connective tissue that is loose is lodged between the organs and connective tissue that is compact is found in the cartilage and the tendons. Now um, the, the cross section of the connective tissue will reveal three major layers the endomycium, the perimycium and the epimycium. The endomycium is that part of the connective tissue which surrounds the individual muscle fibers. So the individual muscle fibers are surrounded by the connective tissue referred to as the endomycium. Then the muscle bundles which comprises of the individual muscle fibers are enclosed by the perimycium. Then the epimycium which is the third uh, level of the connective tissue, it encloses the whole muscle. In many cases, the epimycium may appear to extend into the body of the uh, muscle. So this diagram gives you an, a cross section of the meat which shows the three uh, levels of the uh, um, connective tissue, the epimycium, the endomycium and the perimycium. So the endomycium is that part of the connective tissue which surrounds the muscle fibers. The epimycium uh, uh, covers or encloses the muscle bundles and the perimycium surrounds the complete muscle. Now uh, the connective tissue that I am talking about contains two important proteins called the collagen and elastin. Now these two proteins also determine the cooking quality of meat. Collagen is the connective tissue that is found in and around the muscle fibers and in the tendons. When meat is cooked, the collagen becomes soft and soluble and forms gelatin. And the other protein called as the elastin, this is, where, uh, this is found in large amounts in the elastic connective tissue. It is yellow in color and remains tough even when cooked. The ligaments which join two bones together are ma mostly made up of elastin. The collagen fibers which I was referring to earlier, um, they are inextensible and non-branching whereas the elastin fibers are highly branched and elastic. In young animals, the collagen is partially cross-linked, flexible and relatively inelastic. While in, while in older animals, the degree of cross-linking increases, therefore the flexibility decreases and the toughness increases. Now the third component of the structure of meat is the fat. Fat is distributed throughout the meat in small particles or in large masses. Now the distribution of uh, meat, uh, sorry, the distribution of fat in meat forms uh, a specific patterns on the surface of meat which is referred to as the marbling. Marbling is once again an important uh, quality, um, in an indicator of quality in meat and is an important factor which contributes to tenderness and flavor in muscle tissues. Fat also appears as uh, cover fat which is found on the surface of the lean muscle uh, tissue and the cover fat helps in protecting the flesh of the animal from the action of the microorganisms. Now the fat that is present in meat is of two types, the visible fat and the invisible fat. Fat that is found underneath the skin which is called as a subcutaneous fat and the fat that is found between the muscles which is called as the intermuscular fat um, is creamy white in color. So uh, because it is visible to the naked eye it is called as visible fat. And uh, visible fat is also found around animal organs like the kidneys, the livers and the heart. And uh, this kind of visible fat helps in cushioning the organs and protects them from mechanical stress. The fat that is not visible to the uh, um, naked eye is also called as the invisible fat. 
There is also a small amount of this invisible fat that is found in the connective tissues which surrounds the bundles of muscle fibers. This is, this as I told you is not obvious to the eye, so it is known as invisible fat. Sometimes these lines of fat can be seen and give meat a marble look. Many butchers often trim off the visible fat, uh, especially uh, if you are a, a, a health conscious person, then it's better to trim the fat off from the meat and eat only the lean portions of the meat. Farmers now are breeding animals which have a greater proportion of lean meat and less fat. So this uh, picture shows the invisible fat in the meat. You can find thin lines of fat along the connective tissue which surrounds the bundles of muscle fibers. So this is the visible fat which I was uh, talking to you earlier. Uh, so this is found under the skin and in between the muscles and sometimes also covers the muscles which is called as the cover fat. Now let's move on to the, um, the next major part of the meat uh, that's called as the bone. Bone is also the a part of the gross structure of the meat and uh, when we buy meat at the market it's always desirable to buy a higher proportion of flesh uh, to the bones. Now the condition of the bone is an indication of the age of the animal. In young animals, the chine or the backbone is soft and has a reddish tinge, but in the fully mature animals, the bones are flinty and white. The shape of the bone is an excellent guide for identifying the various cuts of meat. Okay, so, so thus far we have concentrated on the structure of meat. Now let's move on to the composition of meat. What is the meat made up of? The lean meat which is free from fat is made up of water, proteins, fats and minerals like phosphorus, iron and calcium. It also contains some carbohydrates, nitrogenous and non-nitrogenous extractives, pigments, enzymes and vitamins. The exact amounts of these components may vary in different cuts of meat and the, these variations, uh, the amount of these substances present in meat depend on the species of the animal, um, be it the beef, lamb or pork, the breed of the animal, the age of the animal and also the diet of the animal, how the animal was fed and the particular muscle from which the cut of meat was taken. Now let's look into the protein content of meat. The lean muscle contains 15 to 20 percentage of protein and it's directly related to the amount of lean tissue um, in it. The principal proteins in the meat of the muscle are the actin and myosin. Uh, they are the protoplasmic contractile proteins and they help uh, in the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. Now the extracellular proteins, the collagen and gelatin, which are abundant in the uh, connective tissue is another um, uh, part of the protein. Now fat, uh, fat plays an important role in the structure of cell membranes and also acts as a vehicle for energy storage. The fatty acid composition of triglycerides that are present in meat determines its melting point, potential for oxidation and to a large degree its nutritional value. The major triglyceride in beef is triesterin and uh, the unsaturated fats that are present in uh, the meat are very prone to oxidation and when the fat in the meat gets oxidized it leads to a stale rancid flavor referred to as the warmed over flavor. And fat-like substances known as sterols, uh, the cholesterol, uh, which is very essential to metabolism, are found in the fluids of the fat cells. Now, adipose tissue is considered to be a specialized form of connective tissue, which appears late in the development of the organism. So, this is uh, the uh, fat uh, or the marbling of fat, which is seen in the, mus uh, in the muscle of the meat. Then moving on to the uh, carbohydrate content of meat. Carbohydrates are only a minor component of the animals but are particularly important. The carbohydrates in the muscle of the animal they are found in two forms. One is the sugars which include the monosaccharides like the glucose and the glucose is found circulating in the blood of the animal. 
The other form of carbohydrate is the glycogen uh, which is a polysaccharide or a polymer of glucose and it is mainly stored in the liver and in the muscles. Meat also contains two types of pigments, the myoglobin and the hemoglobin. They determine or contribute to the color of the meat. Hemoglobin is a circulating uh, red pigment which transports oxygen in the bloodstream and myoglobin holds the oxygen in the muscles for contraction. The organ meats like the liver and the kidneys have more hemoglobin than the skeletal lean muscle because of their greater blood supply. The color of the meat is largely due to the red pigment called the myoglobin and some hemoglobin that is left in the muscle. Some muscles contain more of these red pigments than others and this contributes to the color differences in the meat. The color differences in the meat can also be due to the age and exercise of the animal and um, but are mainly due to the metabolism of the species and the function of the particular muscle. Meat from muscles which have been used a lot or the, uh, or the muscles which have been exercised a lot or the muscles from the older animals, they usually tend to have a darker color. Enzymes are also present in meat. Now there are specific protein splitting enzymes called as the cathepsins which are found in meat. These protein splitting enzymes are also referred to as the proteolytic enzymes. Um, they, because they uh, split the proteins, they contribute to the tenderness in meat when the meat is aged after rigor mortis has set in. Aging or ripening of meat uh, contributes to tenderness in meat and tenderness is achieved by the action of these protein splitting enzymes. There are also enzymes which catalyze chemical reactions involved in immunological responses that are found in the meat. Now minerals, minerals like phosphorus and iron, they are the chief minerals that are found in the muscles but they are found in different combinations in the muscle tissue. Okay, apart from uh, the carbohydrates, the fat and the pigments uh, found in meat, meat also has certain extractives in it. Now these extractives um, give flavor and um, um, are helpful in, in um, giving flavor to the meat. Now lactic acid is one such extractive which is always present in the muscle tissue of the animals. Now lactic acid as you all know is an intermediate product that is obtained by carbohydrate metabolism and um, there is always an increase in lactic acid in the muscle tissue after rigor mortis has set in. Now rigor mortis is a specific post-mortem change that takes place in meat after the animal is slaughtered. Apart from lactic acid, there are also certain nitrogenous extractors which are found in meat and they are the end products of protein metabolism and they also contribute to the flavor of meat. Offels, offels are also, are also part of the meat. Uh, when I say offels, I am um, referring to the uh, pluck or the organ meats um, or the internal organs of the meats or the entrails of a butchered animal. The name offal means of fall. In other words, the bits which fall off from an animal when it is butchered. So offal, the term offal covers items such as the heart, liver and lungs collectively which are known as the pluck plus the kidneys, the brains, the head, the feet, the tongue, the intestine and the tails. Offal from birds are generally referred to as giblets. Now offals because um, uh, they are organ meats, they have a high supply of blood to them. So they are excellent sources of protein and iron, especially the liver, the kidney and the heart in particular are good sources of iron, vitamin A, D and C and they offer um, um, you know uh, flexibility in uh, preparing dishes and uh, they can be cooked by a variety of uh, uh, cooking methods like grilling, frying, casseroling and braising. So this diagram will give you, a, uh, will give you an idea about the different offals that can be obtained from uh, meat like the brain, the lungs, the liver, the kidney, the tongue. Uh, so they are also cooked and used as uh, 
um, um, and used in the daily diet. As I already told you, uh, these organ meats, uh, because they have a high supply of blood, are good sources of iron and uh, highly prescribed uh, to, uh, to subjects who are suffering from anemia. So moving on to the nutritive value of meat. Uh, meat is a universally popular food and uh, because of its outstanding nutritive value, it contributes to substantial amounts of high quality protein and essential minerals and vitamins to the diet. Now, uh, meat has a high amount of protein in it. Uh, 15 to 20 percent of protein is found in meat and the protein that is found in meat is of outstanding nutritive value because um, um, the protein that is found in meat is of, uh, is of good quality. When I say good quality meat, it has all the essential amino acids in the right proportion. The meat, uh, the protein in meat uh, has a high biological value and a high digestibility coefficient. So it is well utilized by the body and ensures a good supply of essential amino acids which are necessary for growth and maintenance. The biological value of meat uh, in meat is very high when compared to the vegetable proteins. Meat also contains uh, a good amount of iron, phosphorus, zinc, copper and uh, it's an important source of these minerals and uh, the liver which is an important organ meat contains uh, even though it's only a small portion of the entire carcass of the animal it contributes to a large amount of iron. As far as vitamins are concerned vitamin A, thiamine and riboflavin are present in the liver, the kidneys, the heart and the sweetbreads. The pancreas or the thymus is often referred to as the sweetbreads. The lean pork is an outstanding source of thiamine and all lean meats contain some niacin, riboflavin and thiamine. Meat is also relatively high in energy value and the energy value of meat depends on the amount of fat it contains. The fat content of meat varies from 5 to 40 percent and this again varies with the type of animal, the breed of the animal and the age of the animal. Pork is uh, one um, such uh, meat which has a lot of fat in it. The meat fats are rich in saturated fatty acids. The cholesterol content of meat is also high. Uh, every 100 gram of meat gives about 75 milligrams of cholesterol whereas the lean portion of meat contains very little fat in it but a greater proportion of phospholipid and um, the fatty acids that are found in the lean uh, portion of meat have a higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acids than the tissue fats. With this we have come to the end of the module. I have been successful in taking you through the structure, composition and nutritive value of meat. So the next time you go to the market to buy meat, you will be able to select good quality meat and the right cuts of meat. I have also spoken to you about the nutritive value of meat and also about the importance of including meat in our regular diet. But be wise to choose cuts of meat with low fat and adopt the right cooking methods to preserve its nutritive value. Thank you.